should mark iniquities. Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, O God of Israel. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you. Welcome to our celebration of the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We welcome Father Jerry Graham as our presider. You are invited to make a name badge so that Father Jerry and all of us can identify you by your name. If you are with us on Zoom, please remain muted during the service. You may use the chat function to let us know of any questions or announcements you might have. We encourage you to unmute when we pray the Lord's Prayer and exchange peace with one another. Only with God's wisdom and compassion are we able to know what is truly worthy of our time, attention, and labors. When we understand the preciousness of life in Christ, all else becomes unimportant and it becomes easier to leave behind that which saps our energies and leads us away from God's love. Let us join in our opening song. Come and follow me. Come follow me and live, do not be afraid, believe and trust in me, your faith will give you strength, leave all your fears behind you, let your heart be free. Come follow me and live, 
is behind you. Let your heart be free, for I will be your guide. Oh, come and follow me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. Amen. In our gospel, we find, we hear Jesus speak to us of what is impossible for us, but is possible for God, that we have been given the gift of God's own love. And so let us confess those ways in which we have failed to acknowledge the gift of God's love and respond to that. Lord Jesus, in you we find wisdom and the fullness of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you sustain and strengthen us to do your will. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you look upon us with love and tenderness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, you take away the sins of the world, receive our seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of good will. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O oh Lord, we pray, at all times be before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed and prudence was given me. I pleaded and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her because all gold 
in view of her is a little sand. And before her, silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Long before the mountains came to be, and the land and sea and stars of the night, through the endless seasons of all time, you have always been, you will always be. silent word we return to dust and scatter to the wind a thousand years are like a single moment gone as the light that fades at the end of day in every age oh god you have been our refuge in every age, oh God, you have been our home. Teach us to make use of the time we have. Teach us to be patient even as we wait. Teach us to embrace our every joy and pain. To sleep peacefully and to rise up strong in every age. Oh God, you have been our refuge in every reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Let your heart rejoice in the 
Lord. Let your word proclaim his deeds. Let your voice sing out to the world that our God has come to save. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. And you know the commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear witness, you shall not defraud and honor your mother and father. He replied and said to him, teacher, all of these I have observed, have observed from my youth. Jesus said, looking at him, loved him and said to him, you are lacking one thing, go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of heaven. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, for human beings, it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise they tell the story in a Jesuit parish in Missoula, Montana, about a, many years ago there was a priest there and he always started every homily the same way. He would claim the gospel, close the book, and then he would say, now what our Lord meant to say was, what our Lord meant to say? There is so much wrong with that that it's, it's hard to even know where to begin. But when he would say that, he would say, what, the, what our Lord meant to say was, and then he would begin to just give some common sense moralisms that everybody knows. And the problem is, they were just common sense. And, the, and common sense is common. That's the whole point of common sense. It's sense, but it's common. It's what everybody already knows. It's what 95% of people already know. There's a few people that maybe would say, well, I don't have a lot of common sense, but most people, well, the trouble is, if it's already something that everybody knows, why would God send a divine person to take on our humanity and to give us a wisdom if we already know it. And so it has to be some wisdom. It's like that first reading when that great woman wisdom is talked about, that she has the riches. We have to have more than just some common sense moralisms. Jesus didn't come to just put a stamp on what we already know. He came to challenge us to transform us with something that only he could bring to us. And so let's try to go beyond just the common sense surface of this and let's dig for some wisdom. Let's see if we can meet that lovely 
woman wisdom. The point, well, this, this, this saying that it's harder for wealthy, those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle is obviously really disturbing. We just think, well, what in the world? And so common sense translators and, uh, and uh, people who are trying to uh, figure out what they said have tried to reduce it to common sense and say, well, you know what? What if maybe, just maybe, there was a gate in Jerusalem that was called the Camel Gate. And it was this little narrow gate. And so what a camel had to do, it had to come up to it and they had to take off of it all the stuff that it was carrying. And then maybe it could just squeeze through that gate. And maybe that's what Jesus had in mind. And obviously that is not what Jesus had in mind. And that's completely made up. I'm sure most of us have heard, many of us have heard that story that maybe that's what this scripture means. And we have to know that is completely made up. There is no evidence whatsoever for what that means. There is never any evidence that there was a camel gate in Jerusalem. It's something that somebody made up along the way because they couldn't, because, man, that's a tough saying of Jesus. They wanted to make it make more common sense. But if we just take Jesus at his word, what he's saying is, it's impossible. It's not that the camel can squeeze through the gate somehow. It's impossible for the camel to get through the gate. It's impossible to get the camel through the eye of a needle. And Jesus makes it very clear that what we're talking about is impossible to human beings. It is only possible for God. That's, that's the clear teaching that Jesus has here. And that's tough for us to accept that there's something that is impossible for us, that only God can do for us, because that means we'd have to receive it as a gift. And so I think the reason that Jesus, and perhaps it seems clear to exegetes that the reason Jesus starts with the wealthy and says, people of wealth, it's impossible for them, is because in his time, and maybe we too, we tend to think, well, wow, it's, they're the people that have the leg up. I mean, the, the people with wealth, I mean, man, they, can, they could uh, build a church. They could, uh, they could donate tons of money to a Catholic school. They could uh, start an endowment. They could give money to the poor. Well, they must have a leg up. I mean, they, they got some pull with God. They've got a little, they can make a deal with God because they've got money. And what Jesus is saying is, no, no, no. It doesn't matter how many good things we've done. This is impossible for human beings. We're talking about something that is impossible for us human beings. And that is to receive the gift of God's love. And so what does that mean? What does it mean for us to try to get God to love us somehow? If that is as impossible as getting a camel through the eye of a needle, then what is Jesus talking about? He's talking about the gift of God's love. And it is a gift. And so it's God's biggest problem. God's biggest problem is giving his love away for free. And people won't accept it as free. They try to get some kind of a deal with God and get some kind of a, well, God, you really, you really need to love me because I've been a really good person. So, no. That is not how the love of God comes to us. We cannot, the love of God, the gift of God's love for us and for all people is not a reward for good behavior. It is impossible for us, and that's why it is a gift. And if it's possible, it's not a gift. We earned it. So the gift of God's love is the first gift to all people. 
all people, everywhere. Doesn't matter what religion they belong to. Doesn't matter what the color of their skin is. Doesn't matter what race they belong to. Doesn't matter what culture they have. Doesn't matter whether they're heterosexual or homosexual or, or transsexual. It doesn't matter what their uh, political beliefs are. It doesn't matter whether they're Republican or a Democrat or a Trumper or a never Trumper. It doesn't matter. The gift of God's love is a gift and is the first gift to all people everywhere. It doesn't matter if we are an atheist or an agnostic or a believer, still, they all have the gift of God. The atheists just don't know it. So the gift of God's love is the first gift to all people. The spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is the gift, God's gift to all people, which everybody has the gift of God's love. And so what does that mean? Well, one of the things it means is there's a love in all of us that we don't own. You have a love in you you don't own. You have a love in you you don't own. I have a love in me that I don't own. All of us do. And we can tell that by just reflecting a little bit. I can tell all of you I, I would be willing to bet, I said this last night, I meant it, I'd be willing to bet everything I own, which is not very much, by the way, but I'd be willing to bet it all that I can tell you what's going on in your heart right now. You're all wondering, does he know what he's talking about? Isn't that what you're wondering? Is he telling me the truth? Why are you all wondering that? Because when we hear something we instantly have a drive within ourselves that's, that wonders, is that true? Because we want to know the truth. We want to get to the truth and we want to get to reality. And there's a drive in us that wants to get to the truth and reality. And we could respond to that drive and seek the truth or not, but we didn't decide to have the drive in the first place. Did you? Did you decide to have the drive in the first place? No. Where'd it come from? We all have a desire and a drive, or you wouldn't be here probably. We have that desire to reach up, to be a better person than we are today. Tomorrow, to learn more, to be better, to try to, to be a better person. And so we follow that desire, but we didn't decide to have the desire in the first place. Where did it come from? We all want to love the people that we love. We want to love them more deeply. And we all wonder if we, when we hear about the poor and the needs of the world, and we wonder if we should, should I expand my love out to include some more people? And we follow that desire, but we didn't decide to have the desire in the first place. Where did the desire for our love to go deeper and wider come from? Where does the desire to learn more of the truth and to do more of the good come from? We didn't decide to have it in the first place. That's the love we don't own. And that's how we can feel the Holy Spirit of God. It's not a mushy, gushy, wishy, warm feeling necessarily. It is a drive. The Holy Spirit, we can experience the Holy Spirit. It is a drive. It is a drive. It's an energy to know the truth to learn more and more deeper truth, to go do better and to love more widely and deeply. We didn't, we can follow that, but we didn't decide to have it in the first place. That's the gift of God. The reason that we love truth and goodness and beauty and love is because somewhere deep in our hearts, we're already totally in love with truth and goodness and beauty and love because the spirit of God is in our hearts and it is in love with God and it's in love with everything that God loves. So that's why, that's why we seek the truth. That's why we seek to learn. That's why we do better, seek to do better. It's why we seek to love you more deeply. And so that is the first gift of God to everybody. And it should be clear by now, that's impossible for anybody else to make happen. God already made it happen. And so what does that mean? It means that 
There's nothing that we can do to get God to love us more. Let me say that again because we don't really believe it. There is nothing that we can do to get God to love us more than God loves us right now. And there's nothing we can do to make God love us less than God loves us right now. Now, I could do a whole lot of things that will make me love God less. And I could do some things that will make me love God more. But if God loves all of us this much, there is nothing we can do to get him to love us more. The only thing we can do, since we already have the gift of God's love, before we could do anything about it, before we could earn it, before it could be a reward for good behavior, if we've already been given the gift of God's love, then all we can do is live in the awareness, the conscious and intentional awareness of that, and try to cooperate with it and live in conformity with it. And we can do better or worse, but we're not changing the love of God. We're not making this less. We're not making the love of this less with what we do, and we're not making it more. The gift of God's love is the great challenge for us because it could transform the entire world. If everyone in the world could accept, could accept the gift of God's love as gift, that's what changes our hearts. That's where transformation comes from. It's when we realize we have no claim on the love of God. We have no game to play here. We don't have, we can't make a deal with God. We don't have any leverage. We don't have, it doesn't matter how much we have or don't have. That's all impossible. That's all about a, getting the camel through the eye of the needle. We've got nothing, but we are gifted and we receive it as gift. That's what's transforming of the human heart is to receive gift. And we, know, we can tell why Jesus is always talking about telling the Pharisees, you know, you Pharisees, it's the prostitutes and the tax collectors. They're getting into the kingdom of God before you. And it's pretty obvious why. They know it's a gift. They know they don't have any, they don't have any game to play. They don't have any claim on God. They don't have any deals to make. They've got nothing. They've got less than nothing because they know they're sinners. And so they're the ones who are receiving the gift of God's love as pure gift. That's why they're ahead of everybody else. And so that means very simply, if, God's, if the gift of God's love is God's first gift to us, and we must receive it as a gift, then that means that life is not a moral test, right? It means instead that it's an invitation to love along with the love of God. It's to love everything that God loves and to love with the love of God that is the gift he has given to us. And it means very simply what... Uh, People who have been in AA know so clearly that being a moral person is not a matter of a million acts of will. It is about a million acts of surrender. It is about a million acts of surrender to the divine life and the divine love that has been given to us as a gift from God. It's about the statues of Mary. You look at a statue of Mary or an icon of Mary, you never see a fist. Your hands are always like this. They're about receiving a gift from God and surrendering to it and living in the awareness and the reality of it. So as we come to the altar to receive the gift of God's own life and the bread and wine, and the body and blood of Christ, then let's receive the love of God the gift of God's love and his divine life, let's receive it as gift and nothing more.
Let us stand now and declare our faith in the Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and of earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life is everlasting. Amen. Our God knows our deepest desires and our greatest needs. And so with trust and hope, we bring our petitions to God who always wants to hear our prayers. Our response is, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. That all leaders of our church lead with humility, compassion, and true service. God of hope. Hear our hear prayer. That our country's divisions may be healed by our common good and that of the world at large. God of justice, hear our prayer. That wealthy nations find new ways to help those in poverty and to respond quickly to victims of COVID and other natural disasters. God of compassion, hear our prayer. That refugees around the world be cared, with for, be cared for with dignity and be provided with basic human rights. God of all, hear our prayer. For the environment, may we be true stewards and advocates of the earth's resources. God of creation, hear our prayer. That those burdened with physical or mental difficulties find help from us and find courage in God's compassion. God of solace, hear our prayer. That our kiss of peace, even in this time of COVID, be a true symbol of human touch, trust, and connection. God of love, hear our prayer. That we may use this time of parish transition to join in discerning who we really are and who we wish to become as people of God. God of charity, hear our prayer. God of blessing, you look upon all creation with love and with tenderness. Hear our prayer. We may serve you by protecting the weak and caring for the vulnerable. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, like for the world to see. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the For peace, our world is troubled, longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us, make us your living voice. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the dark. 
Christ, we are light, shining your church, gather today. Longing for food, many are hungry. Longing for water, many still thirst. Make us your bread, broken for others, shed until all are fed. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of this church. Amen. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness, we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Savior and our Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our father and that you care for us as all of your daughters and your sons. And so with all of the angels and saints, we exalt and we bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we 
proclaim your death, O Lord, until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O oh Lord, the perfect faith and love together with Francis our Pope and Alexander our Bishop, with all of the bishops, priests and deacons and the entire people that you have made your own everywhere. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and our sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and who are burdened. Make us to serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and to freedom, to peace and to justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all of the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give to them the fullness of your life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles and the Martyrs, with St. Charles, and with all of the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, look instead upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer one or another sign of peace and those who are uh, at home, if you could show us your faces and we will exchange peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace, Jenny. Peace to all of you. <laughs> Peace to you.
God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am Amen. not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my will shall be healed. Lord, you have come to the seashore, neither searching for the rich nor the wise, desiring only that I should
Let us pray. We lost our place there. That's okay, hang on. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and in body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated for our announcements. We have two fisted announcements here, I've realized. They hit you with the one here, and then you get the other one over there. <laughs> Please pick up a bulletin after Mass and stay caught up on all the parish news. If you have a donation, you can place it in the box at the back of church. And thank you very much. The Multicultural Committee will meet in the chapel area immediately after Mass. The Book of Remembrance is now available in the back of the church. There are pages for you to inscribe the names of loved ones who have died. Take a page home, inscribe the name or names, and decorate the page however you wish. Bring your page back prior to the All Saints and All Souls days, November 1st and 2nd. Uh, good morning. Just a couple of additional things. Um, if you're joining the Multicultural Committee meeting, yes, we'll be in the chapel area. If you're not, and you'd like to hang around and visit, well, we invite you to move into the lobby area and even into the office area for, for visiting time, and that allows our meeting uh, to get going. Uh, please, as uh, Mary Lee said, pick up a... Uh, a bulletin. Inside the bulletin is an insert, and there are two uh, programs offered uh, on the insert. On the one side, uh, describes the Lasallian Way, our uh, enrichment series for the fall that begins tomorrow, uh, 1230, in the chapel area. We're exploring the, uh, the rich uh, tradition, principles, and spirituality of St. John Baptist de La Salle, and uh, in solidarity with our partners in ministry, de La Salle North Catholic High School. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Dave Gregory, theology teacher, uh, will be uh, my interviewee. We'll, we'll have a conversation for uh, a few minutes. So I invite you to join us in person or on Zoom. Uh, or uh, the session will be recorded and you can access it from the website at any time. On the other side of the handout, uh, the, the insert in the bulletin, it says voice of the community. And this is our expression of lay reflection on the word. Um, the, as I've mentioned before, the church in many, many areas in its official documents has called upon all of the faithful to read the word of God and interpret it to one another and to the community. And so beginning next Sunday with Sister Phyllis, at the conclusion of mass, those who wish we will gather in the chapel area and invite Sister Phyllis to break open the word of, of, of next Sunday uh, for us further. And, uh, and so again, those of you on Zoom, you can take a 10 minute break, but don't uh, disconnect your connection. That's the Zoom connection we'll use. Um, join us live or it, it will be recorded and posted uh, along with our uh, ordinary Sunday Mass homily. So please uh, consider these programs uh, and join us. Thanks. I'm looking forward to the learning a little about LaSalle and Spirituality instead of Jesuit spirituality. <laughs> <laughs>
Don't tell the Jesuits I said that. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Be. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of our salvation. Of the strength and the refuge sure. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of every nation, over all the earth. Oh, bless the Lord, highest heavens above, bless the Lord, glorify his name. Sun in the day, moon and stars in the night, worship and pray. Creatures of the deep, mountains and hills, birds and beasts in the fields, worship and praise. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of our salvation, rock of rain and a refuge sure. Oh, bless the Lord.